Well, it's time to get some trusted advice from the dental experts at Lifetime Dental Care. And last week we were discussing the impact of gum disease on your overall health. Today we're going to further explore the mouth-body connection, and you might be amazed at that. And we're also looking at ways of treating gum and preventing gum disease. I'm joining once again by Drs. Beth Love and Richard Berry. It's a pleasure to have you both here. Pleasure to be here. I'm glad we're going to expand on this conversation because there's so much that people don't know or think about. And um, Dr. Love, let me talk to you, to you first. How do we know what affects our gums from what affects then the rest of our body? Well, um, we know from our, our conversation last week that gum disease is a bacterial infection that creates inflammation. And this not only breaks down the bone and the supporting structures around our teeth, it's also been linked with a lot of major uh, systemic illnesses, including cardiovascular disease, stroke, of diabetes, certain types of cancer, premature births, and also of low birth rates. We have that list there on the screen. And Dr. Barry, I'm amazed that some of these problems can start. Do they start with bad gum disease? They absolutely do start with bad gum disease. Um, we uh, like to do assessments of the gum disease. We do an evaluation. It's important to have a, uh, a very uh, good uh, dental checkup. From there, we do an evaluation of uh, clinical findings and x-rays to determine the extent of the disease. And at that point, we make a proper diagnosis and uh, appropriate treatment plan. It's interesting, Dr. Berry, because people don't think of going to see you folks for that. They think, I have a sore tooth. And that's why they go to see you or they go for a cleaning. They forget about that gum part, don't they? Absolutely. And it's critical. It is critical. What can you do to someone when you see that start of gum disease? When they have that, uh, we... Uh, develop uh, a treatment plan and do the appropriate cleanings and we can do it mostly non-surgically. And the later stages of disease, it can require some surgery to correct the problem, but with early detection, we can do it most with most patients non-surgically. Dr. Love, can people know when they're having problems? I mean, are there indications that a person should be able to identify themselves? There are issues going on with my gums. Uh, sometimes there are. Sometimes people do have bleeding gums. They have some pain. They have itching. They have a, a mouth odor. But most of them, it's a pretty. It can be a pretty silent disease. But it's also the. Um, there's an interesting um, fact here that the. Uh, they've estimated that the gum tissue, the surface area of the gum tissue that is infected with gum disease, is the the same size as the surface area of the palm of your hand. Well, what does this mean? The palm of your, well, if you had an infection that was this big on your body and it was bleeding and it was inflamed, would you do something about it? And you'd notice it, certainly, you'd, right. And, but, and you would do something about it. And like Dr. Berry said, we can treat this now uh, with a uh, local anesthetics very comfortably. We can make our mouth, our patient's mouths healthy, and then therefore we can reduce the risk mm -hmm. of gum disease being a link to all of these other systemic illnesses. Uh, Dr. Barry, you alluded to the possibility of surgery. Is that on very severe cases? That's usually in severe cases, but the key is early detection because I'd say probably 80% of our cases we can do non-surgically and, and less invasively. And, and we have some before after pictures or just some pictures of some folks that have had some real issues and I think it's, some of those are pretty identifiable. Yes. That's the healthy gums and that's if they're the healthy pink, gums right? right there. Yes. Pink that's and kind of an indication. Yeah, sure. They're pink and they don't bleed and they look nice. <laughs> yeah. Those are good looking. Yes. Yes. I know we have another one It's not so much and I know this person probably waited uh, too long before they went to yeah. see you. Yeah. Yes, they did. That's an extreme case, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's what it can do, uh, develop into. It's interesting that you talk about the tie-in between diseases because I'm a heart disease survivor, so because of that, I have to have antibiotics before I'm treated by my dentist every time. And that's the norm, right, Dr. Love? Because Absolutely. Because things that the bacteria in your mouth can transfer to the rest of the body. They do. They do transfer. Yeah, they can. Yeah, there's, there's uh, open wounds that are created by the gum disease. Those bad bacteria that are causing the gum disease get into the bloodstream, travel to your heart valves, travel to your coronary arteries, your It's kind of scary if you start. It is. It is scary. You'd it's very frightening. It. Yeah. Dr. Berry, what's this right here? Well, that is, if there's a persistent infection, uh, we can do a sophisticated DNA laboratory test, which takes a a saliva sample, we place it in there and FedEx it off. And what that does is it, uh, it measures the type of bacteria and the, uh, the level of bacteria. And we know that certain bacteria 
cause all these problems. There's about 10 of them. Now, out of the hundreds of bacteria in your mouth, there's probably 10 that cause most of the problems with gum disease and systemic problems. Wow, it is amazing how we are starting to use DNA sampling for so many things in such a good way. It is. Wow, very interesting. Dr. Perry, Dr. Love, thank you so much. We hope everybody will give you a call if they see that they need some issues. Thank you so much. Thanks. Have thank your you. checkup. <laughs> thank you. Yes.